Without being prompted with further directions, John just remains entranced by the raw fish. Hi, I'm Phil. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, we're gonna teach you how to make salmon soup. I have no information for you about this dish because I don't know if it's a real recipe. It was described as Mediterranean. I don't think that's true. And so, will it be good? We'll see. All right. Tough time never lasts. Only tough people last. Trying times lately. And when I'm stressed, I tend to drink a little alcohol. Kevin's drinking. He's already ahead of me. Just kidding. I pregame. Hey Kevin, you like that basic lager? I do. Sponsor us platform. I don't know what this hat says. Can you guess? Platform. No. Basic lager. Yes. <laughs> it's odd. I was gonna make bourbon and tea, and I just realized that all my tea is hot, which means I gotta put a lot more ice in it. Or I'm just gonna drink a hot cocktail. End of my day, I like to wind down with a hot cocktail. It's just a hot toddy. It's medicinal. Great. If I had to describe 2020, it would be great said in that tone of voice. Great. Okay, I was further confused at this recipe because they described the beginning of it as a sofrito, which is also not a Mediterranean thing, but it doesn't matter. So I got this big Dutch oven, that's why I cook soups in. The Brent commemorative Dutch oven. He's not dead. Why can he rest in peace anyways? Yeah. I hope have a trying life. I hope Brent sleeps well. In peace. All right, uh, so we're gonna chop some vegetables and I'm happy to do this. And I was thinking, what if Kevin was here and just hung out and didn't have to do anything? Would that make you happy or would you feel deprived? I don't That's feel deprived unless there's garlic to do. There is. I'll, I'll do the garlic. Only the garlic? Yeah. Okay. How about that? That's, that's, that's fair. <laughs> but I can also do all of it. I don't care. You don't gotta do that. <laughs> okay, Kevin. You can just get it out of the way. It's all homegrown garlic. Please don't hurt yourself. And I need about four cloves, but you could do five because that second bulb's kind of small. All right. Five it is. All right. So we're going to start with this bell pepper. We don't need a lot of bell pepper. Also, I think of all peppers in the whole world, the green bell pepper is the shittiest, but it was in the recipe. All right, so I'm over here mincing this bell pepper, and I really only use about half. I don't even know if I, if I wanna do the whole thing, because honestly, I don't, I'm not that into green bell pepper either. It's fine as an ingredient, but I don't wanna like, you know, go gangbusters on it. What is that? What does that term even mean? I've been wondering. What the f is? Years. Who are who are the gangbusters? The first time I heard that word, I thought the person had just made it up. I don't know. All right, over here I got four green onions. Actually, I've got four green onions in like this thing that was just hanging on the side. <laughs> I can't explain that. All right, so I'm gonna chop off the root ends. If you watch internet GIFs or GIFs, you might see someone say you could plant that. But if you do plant that and it grows, it won't taste like anything. Unless you put it in proper soil, which is not part of the food hack. You put it in water, you know what it's gonna taste like? Water. All right. Okay, so here's my bold maneuver. This is how I'm uh, not directly copying the recipe. Gotta add something else. I'm gonna add a rib of celery. Wow, that's so crazy. If I can get it out of my fridge. One rib of celery, that'll really add a depth of flavor. And now it's not directly copying. It's salmon and celery soup. That's right, salmon and celery soup. That website was like the most generic thing. It was like mediterraneanfood.com. That's not what it was, but it was really close to that. <laughs> Something that's unusual about this dish to me is that it does not have actual onions. It's got green onions, but no onions. And with these flavors, you would typically you'd have some onions. All right, look at that. It looks good. Why does it look good? I don't know. All right, we're gonna put some olive oil here in this pot to heat up. Really just a, I mean, not a small amount, but enough to like basically coat the bottom. And then you can take these vegetables with my big honking spoon, and we'll go ahead and start cooking these. Now the, the uh, sound that the pot is making indicates to me that it's too hot. I tell you what, use a spoon for that stupid. It's just and throwing it everywhere. And it turned out the heat is too hot. Now when Kevin's done with the garlic, 
we'll throw that in too. But there's no rush. There's no rush, Kevin. Take your time. Kevin doesn't know if I'm serious or not. Yeah, I do. Yeah, he does. <laughs> All right. Next up, we got two carrots. You can peel them if you want, but you don't got to. And we're gonna use a we're gonna utilize a mandolin tonight. And we're doing this in part for efficiency, but because this soup cooks very quickly, it's very important that the vegetables be very thin so that they cook fast too. You could use a knife if you got a knife. Most people got a knife in their kitchen. But the mandolin will really ensure uniform, very, very thin carrots. Pop it right in there, boss. Thank you, Kevin. Your work is done. Relax. Kick back. Go home. Have a brewski. And when it gets close to the nub, don't slice no more. It's not safe. I'm doing it with a second carrot. Oh, man, that's smelling good. Yeah, this is celery. Duh. Ah, uh, it's like the Mediterranean. I know. No. That's not what it smells like. I don't know what I was going to say. Okay, so these will cook super fast. All right, put these little babies, as former guests would call them, into a bowl. Then we're going to work on patats. Kevin, I lied. You're in charge of stirring the pot right now. All right, drop. Dude, you got to drop some hot takes to really stir the pot while stirring the pot. What if I don't have any hot takes? That might be the most controversial opinion of all. Hot take. I don't have any hot takes. Tepid at best. All right, meanwhile, uh, do the same thing with some golden potatoes. Be a good safety man. Just, just f***ing do it. Then you don't even gotta think. You can just be like... <laughs> All right, the potato's done. You're gonna do this a few more times. We want about a pound of potatoes. A pound of potatoes. A pound of potatoes. You may be wondering why I haven't washed these potatoes. It's because I didn't. I'll wash them in a second. Have you heard of worm grunting? Yeah, I have. You have? Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. My hot take is that Phil should take up worm grunting. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look it up now. You won't be disappointed. I'm interested in it. <laughs> I've watched videos on it. Incredible. Isn't that incredible? It's incredible. Good old potatoes. Another potato. Another day. Okay, that seems like plenty of potatoes. Plantyofpotatoes.com. All right, how they looking, Kev? They look good. Great. Oh yeah. All right, next up, we're gonna add our carrots. Do we really need to add them now? No, but I want to use this bowl for something else. Now these are thin carrots, so they should cook quickly and with great vigor. Over here, we take our potato slices, and now that we've obliterated them, we're gonna wash them. You should wash them before cutting them. And I was feeling lazy. Wow, look how great I am at washing potatoes. Go away, dirt. All right. We'll set those aside, and it's time to make some stock. Now, I can't tell you how many recipes that I have done red that were like, if you got some fish stock on hand, go ahead and use it. Who the hell has fish stock? Because this is a light, Brothy meal, vegetable stock will be far more appropriate. And that's what we're using today. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna make even some more vegetable stock. Probably like four cups of vegetable stock, and maybe like four cups of water. Okay, it looks good. It looks good. Now we crank that heat up, again, because we're making a soup. And if it doesn't look like there's that much liquid, we might add more liquid. All right, now we're gonna add some seasoning. And the seasonings in this Mediterranean soup are the seasons I use on tacos. So you add a little cumin. <laughs> And a little bit of coriander. Yes, what's more Mediterranean than coriander? And then oregano. That is, that is Mediterranean. That's, that'll give you that uh, depth of Mediterranean. Actually, I have fresh oregano. We could have used that. It's too late. And we will bring this up to a boil. And once it boils, we're gonna add the potatoes. In the meantime, we're gonna work on our fish. Now, most people are pretty unfamiliar with fish soup. Uh, not a lot of people are like, you know what sounds good tonight? Fish soup, not that many people. But it can be very, very good. It can be, and tonight it will be. Now on our, uh, we got some dill we're gonna use later. So we'll put that over. This is now the vegetable zone. Okay. And this is now the meat zone. We're being good safety men. And also we're gonna have a lemon to deal with later. So we'll put that over there. Now what kind of fish do you use for this? Well. Tonight we're using salmon. This was described as a salmon recipe. But actually, a fairly thick white fish like cod, halibut, or even sea bass would probably be more appropriate because it holds up better to boiling. And I was given the choices between sockeye salmon, wild caught, and Atlantic farm salmon. And I think the farmed Atlantic salmon actually tastes a lot better. It's like way fattier, it's thicker, but it's not it's like, it's not as good for you. It's like full of bullshit. And if you don't believe me, there's like, has to be a nugget of truth in all the conspiracy videos about farmed salmon. 
where like they like dump poison on him and it makes him fat. I don't know. But the wild caught stuff, like, is it better? I don't know, but I feel slightly better and they were the same price. Argue about it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, argue, yes, argue about it in the comments. How about a pound and a half, actually no, a pound and a quarter wild caught salmon here. And something we're gonna do, which actually will remove a little bit of the flavor, but it'll be far more pleasing to eat, is we're gonna try to remove most of the skin. And the reason we do that, and I, I don't generally advise removing the skin, because I think it's great if you uh, are sauteing the fish or eating it in any other context. The, fi the, the skin, if you boil the skin, it's gonna turn into rubber. And so while it will actually, uh, you could like throw the skin in if you want to make it taste better, you are not gonna wanna eat boiled fish skin. Maybe you could use it to make fish stuff. Kevin's on something. This guy's smart. There's a reason we keep you around, Kevin. So I'm, I'm cutting the skin off. I might, I might just fucking throw it in there. What do you think, Kev? Should I just fucking throw it in there and pull it out later? Yeah, why not? All right, well, let's fucking do it. Let's fucking do it. I don't know how many times Kevin and I have got in a situation where I was like, what the fuck do All right, throw your fish skin in. Why not? Depth of flavor. All right, uh, yeah, so now we're gonna, we're gonna cut our salmon into fairly large chunks. You want them large enough that they'll hold together, but you don't want them to be significantly bigger than bite-sized pieces. So, you know, err on the side of large so that they don't just instantly disintegrate. But, uh, you know, use, use your judgment. Make a decision. I'm telling you, man, I think this was the right salmon choice. This salmon's smelling fine. Smelling this is good. And one of the cool things with uh, salmon soup, or just like fish in soup, it cooks so fast, it's like you're done before you even know it. Look at that, we got a, a pile of fish. All right, I am uh, zesting a lemon in a suboptimal way by using a vegetable peeler. And then I'm gonna take some of that zest and I'm gonna mince it up. If you have a zester, which I have a zester and it doesn't fucking work, just use that. If you're better at zesting things, just do that. Just do your best. But this, this works fine. It's fine, everything's fine. Local man struggles with lemon. More at six o'clock. All right, so that's the lemon zest, which we will in turn mince up, kind of bunch it up. Was this the way to do it? No, it looks awful. Will it be a problem? No, absolutely not. Thanks for stirring that, Kev. Is it boiling? Yeah. All right, that means it's time for our potatoes. There they go, thin boys and girls. Okay, so we're gonna let the potatoes cook about five minutes. And we got this dill, which I'm gonna chop up. I am growing dill, but it's all gone to seed and it tastes, it tastes funky. Man, is dill when it's like past its prime, it goes from like this crazy good flavor to this like cleaning solution flavor that is the worst fucking thing. And I know, because I've tried to make pickles with it. Soapy pickles. All right, we're gonna cut our lemon into wedges. And that's done, and that's done. So really we just need our potatoes to cook. And already, I think one, we used maybe too many potatoes and not enough stock, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just keep it hearty. I don't know. I don't know. This recipe, I don't know. We'll be back. All right, things are looking good, but I think we might be too brothy. I don't know. I'm fishing out the skin. You get it? I'm fishing out the fish skin. You don't get it. There's the fish skin. It's falling apart. I don't know what we're gonna like. We can plant it with the three sisters and we'll be pilgrims. I mean, Native Americans. I don't know what I mean. Where's the rest of the skin? Vinny, you cannot go outside right now. It is forbidden. All right, so we're gonna take some of this zest that I so crudely chopped and some of this dill that I also crudely chopped. Gonna mix that in. I'm gonna let you on a little secret, viewer. I tried the soup off camera. It's really it has no business being as good as it is, but it's good. So when I'm looking at it right now, and I, I think it might be a little too thick, so definitely watering it down would be an option. But I also kind of think like, it, you know, it. that's not a, that, that's a, that's a philosophy, not an instruction. Okay, so we, we put that in, it's gonna taste good. Now we're gonna add the fish, them fish chunks. And like I was saying, this shit, it cooks quick. And the way you know that salmon is done is when it is opaque, and it flake. That's right, he opaque, he flake, he's ready to eat. And what you'll find is that this cooks so fast because it's fish. Fish is so good for you and it cooks fast and it's delicious. What the f are you doing if you don't just eat fish all the time? What the f are you doing if you don't eat fish all the time? I eat fish every day now. Yeah, Kevin, what's wrong with you? I like fish. Do you eat it every day like we do? All right, 
if you are if you are classy, put a saucer under your bowls. Then you don't gotta even touch the bowls. It's classy. Now look, you see this fish? It's basically done. Alright, give your broth a taste. What the f why is this so fing good? Okay, it needs some salt. We never salted it, so it does need some salt. This is stupid good. This flavor combo makes no fing sense to me. We got like Indian spices and dill and fish. And also it's a soup. But it's so fing good, holy shit. We turn it off. The residual heat will keep cooking the fish. It doesn't need much more. Might as well add some pepper. All right, the fish is done, it's flaky. You can tell it's flaking because if you look at some of the fish, it's it's flaking. All right, now, uh, uh, all right, no problem. Okay, so we're gonna finish this soup with a ladle. My big spoon's not that good of a ladle. And we'll just, you know, we'll ladle it in using a ladle. Did you know ladles can really only do one thing and that's ladle? That's how nouns and verbs work. Okay, here's our soup. So Mediterranean. And we will, oh, f well, it's, no, it's fine. I forgot to do this to the soup. Just add some lemon juice, some actual lemon juice. That'll uh, brighten it up with some acid. Acid is delicious. It's one of those things that makes things taste good. And we'll we'll just squeeze this a little bit on this guy. And then we'll garnish with some more dill, like so. And if you want to be super fancy, and you got uh, Maldon flake salt, you could do that. That'd be a nice garnish too. And I recommend serving this with some bread. All right, here's our soup. I'm gonna try it. And once I try it, I'm gonna make some for Kevin so he can try it. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. It's so good. It is so bizarrely good. It's very savory and the spice blend has like these, the coriander comes through and so it has like these weird, almost Indian notes, but it also tastes very fresh because you have that lemon. And overall, it's just, it's like, it's very healthy tasting. This is wonderful. I, I recommend making this weird dish simply labeled salmon soup with celery. Let's make some for Kevin. Yay! Mmm. Oh, oh good, good. It's so stupid. Oh, man. It has no business being that good. <laughs> make this. Yeah. Thanks, MediterraneanFood.com. <laughs> this is totally not the website. Here's me chopping bread onto this plate. Well, folks, apparently that's how you do it. I don't know. Why, why is this so good? Why is this so good, Kevin? Freemasons. All right, we'll see you later. Kevin. Don't tell him to, don't, don't tell him to, don't smash that like button. Tell him not to subscribe. Keep it on the down low. Don't forget to subscribe. Do not subscribe. Smash that bell. Do not smash that bell. Like, comment, and share with a friend. Definitely don't do any of those. See you next time. But do make this. Bye. <laughs>